Hello, teacher. Hello, students. Today, we will start a new unit on atomic physics. Throughout this unit, we will discuss the physical properties of atoms and nuclei, the characteristics of light and radiation, and the process of nuclear fusion and fission. Today, we will begin by examining the characteristics of light, radiation, and the dual nature of matter. Students, I am sure you have been in a car on a hot summer day. Take a moment to think about the experience. The first thing you may consider is how hot the car is relative to the outside world. Perhaps the seats are dark and warm to the touch. The seat belt buckle may be too hot to touch at all. Sometimes we can even see heat radiating off the car's surface. But how and why is this the case? Electromagnetic radiation is emitted by all objects and across a wide range of wavelengths. These wavelengths combine to form the electromagnetic spectrum. The heat radiating off the car is the only part of the electromagnetic spectrum we can physically see. We can feel heat radiation from many hot objects, such as a lit stove element or a hot coal. The car is absorbing the radiation that the sun emits. Different objects or materials absorb heat at different rates. If the seats were black, they would be considered a black body. A black body is an object that is a perfect radiator of electromagnetic energy. So, it will radiate and absorb energy over the entire spectrum. Not all black bodies are black in color, though generally this is the case. This effect causes the seats to absorb the ultraviolet heat from the sun and become hotter than a differently typed body, which does not absorb heat along the same spectrum. While the car seats may become warm, the seat belt buckle can become extremely hot. This is caused by something called the photoelectric effect, which happens any time when light is shown onto a metal surface. The light will cause the surface to emit electrons called photoelectrons, which will generate energy proportional to the frequency and radiation of the light source. Take note that photons are the basic unit of light 
and all other forms of electromagnetic radiation. They are essentially packets of energy that carry electromagnetic radiation. Observe this demonstration. We can see an example of light waves hitting a metal surface. Then they break away into photoelectrons. We use Planck's constant to calculate how much energy is transmitted through an electromagnetic wave. It is expressed as E equals H times F, where E is the energy in joules contained in a photon and is directly proportional to frequency. We owe the discovery of photons and the photoelectric effect to none other than Albert Einstein, who even won a Nobel Prize for his findings in 1921. Before this discovery, it was presumed that waveforms were not made up of particles. Without his theory, the quantum nature of light and electrons would be largely a mystery, and we would not understand the dual nature of matter. Given what we have studied previously in regards to energy and electricity, you may even be able to understand the wave particle duality of matter on your own. What is the wave particle duality of matter? Take a few minutes and discuss with a classmate. Students, let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. I am sure you have a few different theories as to what the wave-particle duality of matter might be. The wave-particle duality of matter is the theory that matter possesses both wave and particle properties, depending on the circumstances. The photoelectric effect is what provided the evidence that these waveforms are actually a stream of individual particles. If you came to this conclusion on your own, excellent work! Evidence of this theory was reinforced in 1922 when scientist Arthur Compton discovered that X-rays were colliding with electrons and behaving like particles. The theory was officially established in 1924 when Louis de Broglie declared that an atom's electrons, protons, and neutrons possess both particle and wave properties. To prove this theory and study photoelectric reactions, we use Einstein's photoelectric equation. The equation states that the maximum kinetic energy of the electron is equal to the photon energy minus the energy to release the electron. This is written in the equation K E max equals H F minus phi where K E refers to the maximum kinetic energy. H represents Planck's constant. F represents frequency. And phi is the minimum energy required to remove an electron from a surface. Please take note, students, as this will be essential to your studies. Let us quickly review what concepts we have learned so we don't run into any complications further on. In this activity, let us match the following terms on the left. Photon, photoelectric effect, and black body with the proper definitions on the right. Good luck! Students, let's get ready. <laughs> Begin.
Time's up. Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. If you properly defined your terms, then you should have matched up your definitions like so. If your table looks like this, great job. Students, today we have begun our study of the dual nature of matter by examining photons, the photoelectric effect, and the photoelectric equation. We have also identified the effectiveness of a black body in absorbing and radiating electromagnetic radiation. Until next time, thank you teacher, thank you students.